Just as I crossed the Mississippi line, I heard that highway start to wind, and I knew that left rear tire was about to go. Well, the spirit was flat, and I got up tight, cause there wasn't a filling station in sight, so I left on down the shoulder on the rim. I went as far as I could, and when I stopped, the car was right in front of this little bar, kind of a redneck little joint called the Dew Drop Bed. Well, I stuck my hair up underneath my hat, and I told the bartender that I had a flat, and would he be kind enough to give me change for a one? Well, there's one thing I was sure proud to see, there wasn't a soul in the place except for him and me, and he just looked disgusted and pointed toward the telephone. I called up the station down the road for a ways, and he said he wasn't very busy today, and he could just have somebody there in just about ten minutes or so. He said, now you just stay right there where you're at, and I didn't bother to tell the darn fool. I sure the hell didn't have any place else to go. I just ordered up a beer and sat down at the bar, and when some guy walked in and said, who owns this car with the peace sign, the mag wheels, and tore on the floor? Well, he just looked at me, and I damn near died, and I decided that I'd just wait outside. So I said, a dollar on the bar and headed for the door. Just then I thought I got out of there with my skin. These five dudes come strolling in with this one old drunk chick and some fellas with green hair. I was almost to the door when the biggest one said, tip your hat to this lady, son. And when I did, all that hair fell out from underneath my hat. Now the last thing I wanted was to get in a fight in Jackson, Mississippi on a Saturday night. Especially when there was three of them and only one of me. But they all started laughing and I felt kind of sick and I knew better think of something quick. So I just reached out and kicked old green teeth right in the knee. Now he let out a yell that curl your hair, but before he could move, I grabbed me a chair. And I said, watch him, folks, because he's a thoroughly dangerous man. Well, you know you may know it, but the man's a spy. He's an undercover agent for the FBI, and he's been sent down here to infiltrate the Ku Klux Klan. He was still bent over, holding on to his knee, but everybody else was looking and listening to me, and I laid it on thicker and heavier as I went. I said, would you believe this man has gone as far as tearing all the stickers off the bumpers of cars that he voted for George McGovern for president? Well, he's a friend of the long-haired hippie type of pink old fags. I bet you he's got a commie flag tucked up on the wall inside of his garage. He's a snake in the grass, I tell you guys, he may look dumb, but that's just a disguise. He's a mastermind in the ways of espionage. They all started looking real suspicious at him, and he jumped up and said, Now wait a minute, Jim, you, you know he's lying, I've been living here all my life. I'm a faithful follower of Brother John's Birch, and I belong to the Antioch Baptist Church, and I ain't even got a garage, you can call home and ask my wife. Then he started saying something about the way I was dressed. I didn't wait around to hear the rest. I was too busy moving and hopping. I didn't run out of luck. When I hit the ground, I was making tracks. And they were just taking my car down off the jack. So I threw the man a 20, jumped in and fired that mother up. Mario and Dreddy would have sure been proud on the way I was moving when I passed that crowd. Coming out the door and headed toward me at a try. Yes, I should have gone ahead and run, but somehow I just couldn't resist the fun of chasing them all just once around the parking lot. Well, they're headed for the car, but I hit the gas and spun around and headed them off at the pass. I was slinging gravel and putting a ton of dust in the air. Well, I had one of my arms stepping and fetching. I was ahead square while the fire the asses were catching, but I figured I'd better go ahead and split before the cops got there. When I hit the road, I was really wheeling, had gravel flying and rubber squealing, and I didn't slow down till I was almost to Arkansas. Well, I think I'm gonna reroute my trip. I wonder if anybody think I flipped if I went to L.A. by Omaha.